See, some of y'all who really rock with God like that, this is your moment. This is adoption day. You know how happy people be when they got adopted? When they didn't have nobody, they didn't have no parents, and somebody finally say, I choose to love you? See, he says, come up out your grave clothes. He said, hey, listen, listen. He who knew no sin became sin. So what? That we could become what? The righteousness of God. For the ways of sin is but the gift of God is eternal life. We, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody in here deserves to die. Eternal separation from God. But he said, I got to make a way for my child. I love them too much. So how do I get them back with me? How do I get them to come back in my right standing with me? And this is the day where we celebrate coming back, having the opportunity to come back in the right standing with God for free. All we must do is believe. See, when you are adopted, and the Bible says we are adopted or grafted into the family of God. We are no longer sl slaves. We are now sons. We are sons of him now. We get the same righteousness. He views us just as he views his son, Jesus Christ. Why? Because the blood of Christ has covered us. So now we can stand before a holy God like, what's up with it? I'm right here. And he accepts us and receives us because of our acceptance of his son. This is the day, I, this is my favorite Sunday to preach in the whole year. This is, the re this is the reason why I even do all of this. If it wasn't for the blood, if it wasn't for the cross of Christ, where would I be? I know where I came from. See, I know where I used to be. I don't know about y'all, but I know what I used to do in the streets. I know how what I was on at school in college, and I know I got I to gotta say thank you. Thank you for saving me from me, from my own mess. See, we always think the devil is our biggest adversary. No, we are our biggest adversary. Our flesh is our biggest adversary. We got to get over ourselves sometimes. So I know I'm going to say today, thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me the, the blood of your son. Thank you for looking at me like I'm worth something. See, some of us did what we did because we didn't think we was worth nothing. That's why we did what we did with our bodies with drugs and drinking and smoking and sexing because we didn't hold much value of ourselves. He said, but I think very much of you. He said, you are my masterpiece. See, we'll hang Picasso's and what, what's that lady? The, the, she's just Mona Lisa, because whoever created that was a masterpiece. So now when it hangs in the museum worth millions and millions of dollars, he said, you and you and you and you, and you're my masterpiece. You're the most amazing thing I made. The Bible said he bent down and formed this in the dust and said, yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm, I like that. We are his masterpiece. You better start knowing who you are. This is the day where you get to stand up and stand flat-footed and look at the devil and say, I'm turning it around. He turned it around. I was on my way to hell and sin, but he turned it around. Now I'm coming up out the grave without the grave clothes. I get this up off of me. I'm a new person. I love this day. If it weren't for the blood, where would I be? Like seriously, if it weren't for Jesus, where would I be? What, chasing money? Like really, if it wasn't for Jesus grabbing me up, where would I really be right now? Right now. Right, literally right now. Where would I be? On the way to brunch? To get drunk out of Moscato's? I mean, uh, uh, mimosas? Like what would I be doing right now? Not loving my children? But thinking I'm a daddy because I drop out money? What would I be doing right now? Because when you go in the world standards, it's real easy to look popular to the world. TikTok can make you borrow real easy off some dumb stuff. But when we amount ourselves and we, we put ourselves to the standard of God, where would we be if it wasn't for the blood of Christ? Let me, let me talk about it. I'm going to talk about it a lot today. Y'all sit down. We're about to get into this. If it wasn't for Jesus, where would I be? Do me a favor, show it. Unplug that the, the thing. Unplug that one. Y'all, uh, today is Resurrection Sunday, and we've been in a series, the black thing right there, that black plug. 
We've been in this series, and we broke our series because it's Easter, so I get to preach something different. This is my favorite thing to preach. I don't know why this thing is not going to be with me today. We just have my favorite thing to preach because this is really the, in the essence of who we are and why we do what we do. We, didn't, we don't do church to play around and play fun and play religion. It's about the cross of Christ for me. And so this is my favorite thing to preach. And, and today I get to change it up and have a little fun. My team's in the building. Y'all here? Turn that down. My team's in the building. Y'all ain't even here. My team's in the building. Oh, Lord. I'm going to come away from y'all. Y'all energy going to kill me today. Jesus. Hey, who in here likes anime? I'm an anime fan. My, my favorite anime is Dragon Ball Z. Now y'all here. Like, now y'all wait. My favorite anime is Dragon Ball Z. There's something about Dragon Ball Z. The world is always having an issue. Somebody's always trying to come and mess up the world, take over the world, destroy the world, whether it's Cell and, 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 or whether it's, it's, it's Raditz and Nappa looking for Goku, whether it's Frieza. Everybody's always mad at the Earth. Y'all like, who is Frieza? Who is Nappa? Everybody who don't do anime. These are the, the villains that always come and trying to kill the Earth. And right always at his last moment, when all is failed, here come the main character. His name is Goku. And when Goku gets there, he always comes and saves the day. Always. But you just right when everybody, half the people didn't die, right when they about to blow up the earth, here comes Goku. And as I was pondering on my favorite anime, <laughs> you know, I could preach anything. I'm like, that would be a great sermon. So today I want to preach to you from the topic of Game Changers Boss Move. Game Changers Boss Move. God said, I need them this year to lay hands to my authority. So every year we do kind of the typical Easter lesson, but I don't want to talk as much today about the debt and the rock moving and we all get happy and we do the Easter plays. That's cool, but what I need us to grow into and mature to is to understand what that really did for us. The authority in Christ that it truly gave us. So I want to spend my time today doing something a little different, talking about, listen, the cross of Christ, the cross really won't matter to you if you don't understand what it is. We always talk about the death, but we don't really talk about as much as the resurrection. The fact that he rose with all power in his hand, hand giving that to us. And, and what would happen is Goku will always show up and save the day and, and, and save everybody. And God said, I need them to understand this. I, need, I, I want to read something to you. Has something ever happened in your life and it was a game changer? Like, kind of like when Mahomes got drafted to the Chiefs. You're like, yeah, we're about to win. <laughs> or like um, when LeBron went to Miami with Wade and Bosch, everybody up, they're getting rings. You knew that the choice that they made and what had just happened just changed the game. Yeah. Have you ever witnessed somebody do boss moves? They make a boss move, and you're like, bro, that, that's a boss right there. And something dying on me. Give you my definition first. Let me, get, let me give you all the definition of boss move. I think it'll help you. Now, trusty, my trusty Urban Dictionary is the most trusted thing out there. Watch, boss moves, boss moves is any and all actions ex executed by the man in charge. And then I started to think it. Game changers make boss moves. People who make boss moves are game changers. In order for us to become a game changer, we must make boss moves. But the only way we make boss moves is by knowing who we are. And that's the problem. We honestly don't know who we are in Christ. We really, really don't understand who we are in Christ. And we spend way too much of our time being Christians running from the devil. Run, we spend more time rebuking him than loosing stuff. We spend more time scared running. Some of us scared to even pray in the spirit because we don't want to antagonize the enemy and he attack our life. So if I, if, I, if I bond some stuff and I go too hard, I'm going to draw his attention. It's like when you're in a war, which we know this is spiritual for warfare, but when you're in a war, sometimes the strategy is to be quiet. You want to sneak up on your enemy. They don't want them to see you coming. And some of us, we, we sneaking in life, trying not to pick up no dust so the enemy won't see us, so we don't worship too hard, we don't pray too hard, we don't come to church and do too much because that may get the attention of the enemy. And we're scared to deal with him. I'm trying to get us to the point where you step right up in his stuff. Will you step right up in your marriage? Will you step right up with your kids and start saying in the name of Jesus and not just talking? Not, we, we're good talkers, not just talking, but standing right flat-footed on the power that God has given you. 
I want us to leave Resurrection Sunday, under, leave Resurrected, yeah. understanding who you are in Christ for real, for real. Yeah. Not just a cool Sunday message where we get hyped and we sing the, the songs that kind of represent the, uh, the Easter and the, the stones and the bunnies. No, no, I want you to really leave here different yeah. with a certain, I want your chest out. See, see, I thought that was me depicting Jesus up there on fire. No, 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 that's supposed to be you. See, he says you'll be able to do greater things. Y'all are supposed to be coming through your life on fire just looking at stuff, beefed up and ready just to bow the enemy and everything, but we won't do that. We'll take a more safer approach because we're too scared and sometimes we just don't know. So today you're going to leave here knowing. Exactly who you are in Christ with a certain, and you're going to have the choice to choose authority and to stand in God. Some of y'all going to start moving different after today. Sometimes you're gonna, some of y'all going to go back to y'all job thinking different. Like, I just thought I would never get the promotion. Nobody ever noticed me. Like, oh, God, you notice me. You gonna put, what, you, what door are you going to open up? Y'all going to start moving and looking different now because y'all realize the authority that you have in Christ. Give me my video one. Maybe I can make this a little bit simple for you. Give me video one. See, something happens. The whole movie, they're running from the, the, the enemy, the entire movie. He's running. And something happens. He realizes... I ain't running no more. And then instead of him ducking, dodging, scared, he just puts his hands up and say, in the name of Jesus. He didn't say that, but I'm, I'm not running no more. And then he started looking at his palms like, that's what I was running from? But then something happens. When he realizes who he is, when the, the enemy tries to attack again, get a little closer. See, sometimes he'll just shoot darts at you from across the room. And when he realized you ain't standing for that, he said, let me get closer. But he said, that ain't going to work either. And he went from defending himself to just kind of taking it easy. Like when he starts to realize more and more and more who he is. And then something else happened. He went from playing defense. See, we keep running from the devil. You better start taking it to him. See, you're not going to have my children. You're not going to have my marriage. So instead of me waiting for you to start some stuff, let me start some stuff with you. Let me bring the fight to you. Instead of me waiting for you to sin, I'm not waiting for the phone call about my kids. I'm already in prayer. I'm already telling the devil where he's going to go. We got to get to the point when we realize who we are. Stop running and faking and hiding from the enemy when you have authority over him. He says, whatever you bind on earth, ah. Uh, Whatever you lose on earth, I, in other words, I'm backing what you do. You have the authority. I'm not, this is the kingdom of God, and I'm not moving until you move. Jesus said, he said, Jesus said, I'm going back to be with the Father. Like, don't move until the helper comes. The Holy Spirit is going to come down, and then you, then wait for him, and when you get him, y'all better do greater things than me. Because now I'm not walking with you, I'm living in you. Y'all got to remember who's in your chest. You got to remember who, who, when you speak, who you're speaking, you're an ambassadors of Christ. When you speak, who you're speaking on behalf of. When you whoop the enemy's tail, who you whooping him for? Yeah. This is between God and the enemy. It was as a battle, and we right in the middle. And God, just like when he put you us in the garden, and he said, hey, I'm going to put him in the garden. And he allowed the serpent to come up. He allowed us to be tempted. It's according to what we going to do or what we not going to do. We choose sin. We walk away from God. We deny God. He don't do it. He's waiting for us to step up into authority. I don't want us to have another year when we're walking around here living the same lives, just doing the same stuff, blessing and praying that God do something this year, begging for God to do something this year. Please, God, don't make this happen. Please, God, don't make this happen. We're scared. We're living scared. And I got kids. And as long as I tell you I got you, you better not be scared. Because if I say I got you, you better believe it. And now if God say he got you, you better believe it. You better understand it. Give me point one. I want to get us through this. Give me point one. Do you know who you are? Watch this. Before we talk about this, Jesus, I need you to understand who you are or the promises of God won't make no sense to you or they'll look really bland to you or they won't look very attractive to you because you will feel like they're out of your reach. No, 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 no. We carry the power. You got to understand who you are. Give me Ephesians chapter 2. Give me verse 3. Can, 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 you, can you help me? I'm going to have you. We forget who we are. And that's why we have no power. Because we're not operating in who we are. He said we apples and we running around with like look like a pineapple. Come on. He says you're alive and we don't move like we dead. What's that animal that when you get close they play dead? Possum. 
We are there playing like we did so the enemy think we ain't, so he don't bother us. He said, get up with your authority. And some of us are scared to open our mouth because we just we don't believe God is going to show. We say, I can say it, but man, I ain't, you know, I've been messing up. See, this is why I love the Bible and I love the cross. Because even when you mess up, yeah. while you were yet sinners. Mm. Right, right. Oh, give me Ephesians. I ain't here yet. Give me Ephesians chapter 2. Give me first strength. Give me 3 through 10. Let's go. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. Mm -hmm. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, uh -huh. just like everyone else. Uh -huh. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loves us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. Mm -hmm. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms. Paul, listen. We were all dead because of our sins, but now alive because of Christ. Seated in heavenly places. How did, how, why are we seated in heavenly places? Where is Jesus? The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, uh, in Romans 8, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, petitioning on our behalf. We go where he go. If God said, well, because now we're sons. We share in the promises of God, we're sons. So wherever Jesus, he said, when I die, you die. When I raise, you rose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep going, read, read, read. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with along him. Along with Christ. In the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ. Uh -huh. God saved you by his grace when you believed. When you what? Believe. When you what? Believe. He saved you by his grace when you believed. Yeah. See, we always taught it like you got to believe and you got to do 10 things tomorrow or you yeah. right back in, uh, are you back in hell. When you believe and put your faith in Jesus Christ in your heart of hearts, you are saved. You are sealed until the day of redemption, the text says. Keep going. And you can't take credit for this. You can't take credit for it. it is a you don't get credit for this. This is all based on grace on what he did on the cross because he knows we're, we're trifling. He knows we're full of pride. And he knows if it makes it law-based or if it makes it works-based, if I did 10 works and you do nine, I'm going to stun on you. And I'm going to get to heaven like, why she in here? I did 10, she did nine. He said, no, 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 this ain't got nothing to do with you. This has everything to do with what I did. You take no credit for this. Go read it. It is a gift from God. It's a gift. When something is a gift, I can't, I can't do you a favor <laughs> and give you something. The next time I see you, by like, what a 10? And you're like, what 10? Well, I did it for the little help I gave you. It wasn't a gift. The only requirement is our belief because it's a gift. It's a free gift of grace so no one can boast. This version says it's a free gift of grace. Nobody can take credit for it. We have to stop there and realize this is not based on what you do. It's based on what he did. Because he, we, we, he was, when he raised Christ, the scripture said we were raised with Christ. In other words, we get to piggyback on what Jesus do. Your feet ain't on the ground. You just own Jesus' back. And when he moved, you get to piggyback on what he did. That's the, the gift that God has given you. Just get on my back. Yeah. Come on. And you get to get carried around. By what Jesus has done. Finish it off. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. You're a masterpiece. Now watch. Well, how can you be a masterpiece if you're a sinner? He just tells you. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you've done. So nobody can boast about it. He says, he says, so you, God saved you by his grace. His grace and love for you is masterful. His love is so masterful. It can change you and make you look like something that you're not. Let me make, let me, give me, where's, is Misha ready? Go see, see, I, I want to show y'all something. I want to show y'all something. He says, you are my masterpiece. How could you be a masterpiece? He says, my love and grace for you, the free gift, I loved you so much that it covered you, it rechanged and reformed you. Matter of fact, let me finish this. He said, for God's, we are God's masterpiece. Watch this. He has created us anew, Where? In Christ Jesus. So you are a new person because of what Christ did. You are masterful in the sight of God. I need you to understand who you are. You are masterful in the sight of God because of your belief in Christ Jesus. Now he credits, he, it's called substitutionary atonement. He substitutes what Jesus did for your atonement. So now he only sees what, what, what Jesus did on the cross if you believe. He said, I separate your sins as far as the east from the west. I can't see them. 
all I see on you is the blood of Christ. Because some of us are stuck in shame, what I used to be, what I used to do. Oh, I know all about it. I, I didn't even want a pastor because of who I used to be. They ain't going to never listen because what I used to be, and I used to be a hoe, and I used to do this, God, nobody's going to ever care. He says, you are created anew in me. Go. But Lord, they're not going to listen. Go obey. But Lord, nobody wants me. See, you may think very little of yourself, but he says, I got a plan for you. I just need your obedience. You are masterful to me. Because you put your faith in my son, all I see now is him. Watch this, watch this. Ends it here. He says, good things. He says, so he can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Watch this. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. The whole point is for you to do good things. Who are you? You know who you are. The whole plan for, for him to make you right, clean you up through Jesus Christ, and set you back out there to do good things for him. Some of us don't want to go do good things because we're scared. We're afraid God will never accept us. He said, this was a plan from the beginning. He said, the minute sin entered the world, everybody who was born into sin, shaping into iniquity, everybody needed the same grace out the, out the womb. He said, but I created you anew, master. But watch this. Watch this. Give me, give me a second Corinthians. Can you give me second Corinthians chapter 5? Verse 16. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 16. Go. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. Pause. We have stopped evaluating each other from a human point of view. So what would they say about you? So what would the teacher say about you? So what would your daddy say about you or didn't say? So what would your mama say or didn't say? We don't, we don't use that no more. We're created anew. We don't use what the world or what the culture say about you from a human point of view. That's not the standard. So what would they say about you? He says, go. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. How differently I know him now. See, when he walked around the earth, they said the same thing. Ain't that Joseph, the carpenter's son? We ain't worshiping him. How can he be? He said, don't worry. They did the same thing to Jesus. He said, they didn't think very much about him either. He said, but don't worry, we don't measure people by that no more. We don't measure people by the wrong things they do anymore. That's, that's a human point of view. Because I know humans, we love to point fingers and tell somebody what they know. He says, that's not the standard anymore. What does the standard go? This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Any man that coming to Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold. All things have become new. Why? Because you're in So all things have become new in your life, new how people see you, new who you are, because now you're inside and, and found your faith and found your identity in Christ Jesus. He says, so he makes it clear, he says, this means, he tells you exactly what it means, that anyone, anyone, I'm sorry we're not the chosen people, Jew or Gentile, anyone, who believes and put their faith in Jesus Christ, anyone become, belongs to Christ has become a new person. Go, verse 18. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back. It's a gift again. It's a gift. You cannot take credit for it. So what, how good you live, how much money you give, how much church you go to, how cool you look on Facebook and Instagram with your nice post about Jesus. It's a gift. You can do all of that and you just need the same grace. You're still a sinner. You are still a sinner on your best day. We don't get to judge or point fingers at nobody. We are all on our best day sinners. Don't care who you are, where you're from, or what you do. You are a sinner in need of, in need of grace. Go. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. He said, I need you now, since you got saved, to go out and save others. I'm giving you a task to reconcile other people. You're supposed to be putting your, your fish pole out there willing to me. God saved me. He can save you too. Look out. You remember who I used to be. Come on in here. Go. For, for God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. That's no. okay. For God, listen to the words. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. In other words, he reconciled him, his, you to him. Back to, he was in Christ doing all the work, making it right for you. Watch this. this is good. I'm about to paint a picture for y'all in a minute. Go, go. No longer counting people's sins against them. No longer counting people's sins against them. 
For God was in Christ reconciling, making things right, fixing things, repairing things to for him and us to be face to face, for us to have a relationship with him, no matter what sin it was, no longer counting people's sins against him. He don't have no, 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 no booklet of all the mess you've done and ready to bash you for it. He said, I don't count them against you no more. Why? Because now I'm, I'm using Christ Jesus. I'm using what he did as payment for what you did. Go. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. Uh -huh. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Mm -hmm. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God. You're blocking my view <laughs> through Christ. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> is, is she? Is she? Never mind. Give me this. Uh, Brandy, come here. Camera help, Brandy. Put that up here for me. I need some help. Who can I call? Team Jack with me? Y'all gonna help me? Come on. Come on. Oh, I need some help. Need somebody. Come on, Raylan. It's Team Jack. You gotta come up with that one. How many is that? Yeah, we may want to take your bag off. Yeah. Oh, you put you put that on over your jacket. I need y'all to come over on this side. I think uh one, two, three. I only need I need four. I, I don't need you right now. I need y'all. I, I got I got what I need. I got what I need right here. Yeah, thank y'all though. Thank y'all. Put that on. Where you go, B? Uh, you know, me? Come on, come on, no, no. No, go, I want you in the box. Come on, come on, Darren. Come on, move. Here, put this on. Put it on, just side it on, just put it on real close. Here, go, show him real with them. I want to paint y'all a picture. He said, do that. give me, I want you to leave 2 Corinthians up there. He says, verse 21, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Today, he's playing Christ. He's righteous. Never sinned. Now turn around, y'all. You guys, you, you good? Now face the crowd. Now face the crowd. He's never sinned. This is all of us. Just sinners. And something happened. He says, he who knew no sin became sin. Take, take them shirts back off. <laughs> oh, it's some work to salvation. You just believe. See, if they believe in me, they're just going to do what I say. Come on. Now, put that on. Come on, just put it on right over everything. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Stuff it on, stuff it on. I'm going to help you. I'm going to start stuffing on it for you. Come on, just put them all on. Put the arms on. Come on, I need you to stack it on. This is what he looks like. He got all these layers of your mess. All the layers of your mess that he had to take on. See, when they beat him, beat him like crap with the cat of nine tails, the cat of nine tails was a leather strap with nine straps. And what they take and put glue or some type of adhesive and dip it in kind of all sharp materials, and they beat him like a dog. Because he knew you were going to be a, a foolish person and come live how you wanted to live, do what you wanted to do, go where you wanted to go. Do, he was, he was going to take your time, talent, and treasure, everything he gave you in his life, and do what you wanted to do. So he had to take a beating. All to put your mess on him. He never took off righteousness. He's still who he is. But he put on your mess. Now we have, a, now we have something now. We have a choice. Because he who knew no sin became sin. So sin is not their issue anymore. The sin, now they got, they got one choice because it's a choice. Either we decide to put on righteousness or we don't. We decide to believe in Jesus or we don't. But it's not a sin issue no more. He took care of that. But now they have a choice to make. Do y'all believe in Jesus or not? You do? Okay, well, you get to put on righteousness. You get to put on righteousness because now it was free. They didn't have to do nothing for it. Actually, he brought it to them. He says, I took on the sin issue. 
All I need you to do now is believe that I actually did it. Believe that I actually literally did it and then put on my righteousness. Now, look, 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 look. They still make mistakes. But the payment for it was put on him. So now all the looking crazy and the bagginess and the red and all is on Christ now. But he never left his righteousness. He just carrying the burden of sin. The Bible says the blood of the lamb is sitting before the throne. He says the payment is sitting on him. That's why in Romans it says he sitting at the right side, pleading on your behalf, because God is sitting in the middle. He's sitting on the right side of God. And God is like, and he's like, no, 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 stop. You cannot touch them. I got it. He said, oh, no, 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 you can't touch them. I, I pay for that. And now they get to live free and get to mosey on in life free because they put their faith in Jesus. They no longer have to be, they no longer associated with it because they put their faith in. We need to understand this because this is the biggest thing, the biggest trick that enemy, this is the biggest trick that the enemy puts on us to make us think we're not worthy of it. That's why people just say, well, I'm not going to go to church yet because I ain't ready. I ain't cleaned myself up. And you never will. You do not get healed before you go to the hospital. You don't go home and patch yourself up, clip yourself up, sew yourself up, then go into the hospital, do your chemo, and make up a bunch of stuff in the kitchen that you didn't made up your own resolution. You ain't go out and pick some leaves and, and, and put them in the thing and put some water and say, I made me a remedy. And then go to the hospital and say, Doctor, am I okay? That's not what happens. That's what the church is for, for you to come in here. See, that's why we got to remove this judgment thing. People are supposed to come in here jacked up. They're supposed to come in here not doing anything that looks like Jesus. Because really, if we're doing the thing, if we're looking like him, eventually, yeah. what we do and who we are will rub off on them. Yeah. That's why we have to remove this from them and allow people to take their stuff and throw it on Jesus. Yeah. But we block it. Like, no, keep your shirt on. He don't want that. He don't want your sin. Come in here right. So he, we block people from the kingdom. We block people from Jesus' grace because we tell them, you're responsible for it. You're responsible for looking new. You're not created new in Christ. You're created new, and then you come to Christ. That is a lie. The whole purpose is so the, the, the drug addict, the weed head, the hoe, the, the person that's abusive, all comes in here, and if we really care in the Holy Spirit for real, and if we really do what we're supposed to be doing, they don't get delivered. The issue is they come to church, and we acting just a fool like them. So they're like, why am I here? What's the point of coming to church? Y'all smoke, drinking, kicking like a mug too. So I guess I'm going to just go back in the world and do me. What do you need a Savior for? Y'all ain't acting saved. That's the problem. Thank y'all. Well, my, give me my, bring me that box. Yeah, you keep it if you want. Bring me, I need, I need to paint this again. I need to make this clear. I got it. Where my other one? Can I let her do this? Where are my men at? You up here, stay up here. Now just stand there, hold that. Come here, Deshaun. <laughs> now, this is chicken wings. Raw, yep. bacteria. Yep. Nobody wants this. Anybody want to take a bite? Why? It's raw. It's undone. It hasn't been processed. It hasn't been through any process to make it something else. It still has some value, but here, take a bite for me. I call, I'll pay the doctor bill. You going to do it? See this? Oh, I can preach that. I can preach that because that's what we do sometimes in church. We have people biting on raw food that ain't good for them and going to make them sick, but that's not what we're going to do. Something happens when you take this and rub it around in some of this. See, there's some seasons in there. I was going to bring a, pot, a, crock, a, a, a fryer up here and cook chicken the whole service. You take it and you dip it in here and you coat it with something, right? You coat it with some grace. And then you dip it and you submerge it in some hot grease, some blood. And then it comes out. Oh, I switch hands because I touched the raw chicken. It comes out looking real different. You want that? See, that's how it's supposed to be in your life. 
Nobody was trying to get a piece of that, but everybody right now is hoping that I call you up here. <laughs> to get a, it smelled good too. Everybody like, I want that. And if we allow people to come into the house of God raw, and we let the Holy Spirit dip them and process them, he says, I, he says, I'm making my appeal through you. So you're going to walk around looking good, walk around smelling good. Who want a piece? The shine back there like, I, don't bring me up here. Looking good, smelling good, because there's going to be people throwing their hand up like, I want a piece. There's going to be people running their hand up like, I want a piece because your life, because your life. Is, and they're going to they go be like, and they'll be licking because every time they're around you, every time they're around you, it's so good. Now, wait, wait, wait. I want you to hold this. Some of us, some of us take it a little further, though. And we allow God, we allow God to really make us disciples. We have stopped being scared and really stepping our gifts. Some of y'all got all kind of gifts. Y'all can sing. Y'all got preaching abilities. Y'all got all kind of y'all prophetess. God speak to you clearly. You ain't never told nobody. I'll be hearing from God. I know I ain't tripping. God been speaking to you since you was a kid. Y'all got all kind of gifts. And some of y'all let, let God do this to you. Because so, so here you go. We, our motto here is Jesus is Lord. Now, Lord is translated two ways in the Greek, in the Hebrew. One. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Yahweh. So Jesus, we believe Jesus is God. He said, I was in Christ. Remember, uh, make, uh, 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 I was in Christ. God was in, for God was in Christ, bringing us back to himself. Jesus is God. We call it the Trinity. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But hold up, hold up. Then we believe Jesus is Lord. Capital L, small O, small R, small D. We call that Adonai. Adonai translates is to owner or master. So some of us are going to believe in him to be God and receive salvation. But some of us, that's not good enough. Yeah. We're going to say, I believe you now, but since you love me, now i got to love you back. Yeah. So now that we're going to let the Holy Spirit shift our lives and change our lives. We're going to let the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah he'll be like, yeah. And something, he said, get the other side. We're going to let the Holy Spirit just douse us. Yeah. See, all hostile sins, all hostile sins is water and season. Yeah. See, some of y'all said, Lord, season me. Put some salt and pepper and paprika. Get some stuff on my life. I need to be tasty. God, prune me. It's going to hurt. I got to give up stuff. I'm gonna, you, but season me, Lord. Prune me. Do what you want to do with me because I'm a new creature. Go ahead and taste it with it. Now, it's in there. The season's right. It's in there. Yeah, yeah. It look right. See, see what happens is, see, over there, they eating their chicken, but they like, can you run me? Can I have a... Can I have some of that hot sauce? But no, God has said, no, no, this is a process. See here, salvation is free. Salvation is free. It's through belief. But sanctification is not free. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. Salvation, God said, just believe in me and you can receive it and be spend eternity with me. But if you want to please me, if you want the power of the Holy Spirit to work through you, if you want to be a kingdom asset, if you want to step into some kingdom thinking and some kingdom marriages and some kingdom parenting and some kingdom investing and money spending, it's an it's a, it's a order in the Bible that he teaches us how to do with everything. Our time, we all got time because all y'all alive. Ain't nobody in here dropped dead. We all have talent. You can do something. You may be a professional smiler like Anthony. I met the dude for the first time in 2009. Like, this dude just, 2008, like, he just never stopped smiling. And he had this big, pretty white teeth. I'm just like, but how many years you have braces? Ten? <laughs> but his smile just makes you just want to go up and talk to him. Just inviting. Some of y'all are professional smilers. You don't know how long it's been since somebody just has somebody just smile and be nice to them. They're so used to people being mean to them and walking past them and not valuing them. Some y'all all have a gift. Whether your gift is just smiling, that's a gift. God put it there. He wants to use it. And all of us have treasure. We all got some type of money. Whether we make $5 an hour or 50 We all have some type of money. And it's orders in every area where God is telling us how to live. He wants to use those things. He wants to bless those things. He wants to take you from zero to 100 real quick. He wants to make you a millionaire if you let him, if he can trust you with it. He wants to give you all the time in the world. He wouldn't mind you at all not working and not having a boss and having your own business. He got all these things built in here for them. We don't trust the Bible. We don't trust him with our gifts. We take our gifts and put it into us. Thank you. I, thought, I think all the time, I tell my wife, I tell, we've been talking about this. I said, what if for the last four years, four and a half years, we took all the money and the time and the gifts that we put into the ministry and we put it into ourselves? Would I have a call out right now? What would I have right now if I took what I offered to God and put it into me? 
We were just thinking because we knew we would never do anything differently. What I'm, at, what I'm bringing up and why I'm asking today is, for the last four or five, ten years, who has got your gifts? You? Or did God get it? Because if you offer yourself up to God, for real, for real, and he allowed him to show you your divine destiny for your life. See, all of us were born for a reason. We all have a purpose, a divine destiny. We got a life, because God said, I mean, I'm a gentleman. If you don't want me in your life, I'm going to back up. I ain't going to force myself up on you. But oh, if you want me, you seek me, you're going to find Knock the door, will be open. All of us have a purpose for our life. And some of us would die and never really know our purpose. Never knew what God really would have did with your time, time, and treasure. Because we won't trust him with it. God said, I need to season you. I'm trying to transform you. And the chicken is still the chicken. It's still chicken. The properties change. Things change because it was submerged. It was allowed to let the surrounding things that it was inside of reshape it. The chicken, the, the grease didn't go in the chicken and change it. The chicken went in the grease. Any man be in is a new creature. It's because now you're in him. That's what makes you new. Not because you outside of him doing a bunch of nice church religion stuff. Any man be in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Let it go. Old things have passed away. You are not that person no more. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so other... Some other people may remember you as that. Remember, we don't, we don't use human, human uh, we, we no longer use human reasoning. We no, we no, we no longer stop, we stop evaluating people from a human point of view. Who cares what people say about you? I'm in Christ. Uh, let me give y'all this last one. Let me give y'all last one. We are mental, we are in mental, emotional, and psychological bondage because we have forgotten who we are. We're in mental, emotional, and psychological bondage to be good because we really don't know who we are in Christ. We don't know that we his masterpiece. We don't know that we sit in heavenly places with him. We don't know that our sins and our mess ups are covered in Christ. I tell you all the time, God do not care what you did last night. He's worried about what you're doing right now. Because last night, he can cover that. He got plenty of blood. We keep telling people there ain't enough blood to cover your sin. God ain't forgiving you unless you do all this right now. So the blood don't work now. It's not enough now. He's worried about what you've given him and what you want to do for him right now. And because we don't know who we are, we have lost to give my video to. And this is how some of us need to go back. See, Simba was out there eating worms, talking about some akuna matata. That ain't what lions do. That ain't what kings do. But he ran because he let somebody whisper in his ear and tell him something that he wasn't. He let somebody manipulate him and tell him that he did something that he didn't. And a lot of us, the enemy just been sitting in our ear whispering for years, for decades, making us believe that we're something that we're not. And he says, hey, my, my dad is gone. He's dead. He said, no, he ain't. Look harder. And some of y'all need to put a mirror up and see that you were the splitting image of Christ. You didn't know that you was made in his image. You didn't know that he created you anew in Christ Jesus. Now when God sees you, he sees him. And some of us need to remember who you are. Because, because you have forgotten me, you have forgotten who you are in your position and what you're supposed to be doing because you don't understand who you are in me. And some of us need to go back and do the things that God's been telling us to do. We have moved away because of shame. We have moved away because of guilt. And God said, go back. We are splitting images of our father. I got a son. Come here. Now, ever since he was a baby, people would tell me, that's definitely your son. They say, you, yeah, yeah, that's, that's your kid. And it still is. And, and because he's my son, we, he has my DNA. He looks like me. He even acts like me. Because, <laughs> because he's my son, he lives under my roof and cares. He don't worry about dinner. He goes downstairs. And he grabs something out of there, and he cooks what he wants. If he's hungry and need a snack, he don't call my dad, can I have the donut? Because he knows I've given him authority. Access to rule and move and do everything in the kingdom. In the kingdom that I've set for him because he's made in my image. Give me Genesis. He's made in my image and in my likeness. So he understands his authority. One time I came like, who ate my stuff? He said, well, usually, Dad, you really don't care. So I just went on here and ate it. And I, I was impressed. I'm like, you show right. Enjoy it. Are you, was it good? Cool. I was impressed because what it got to me is you understood I have authority here. 
you let me roam around and have dominion. So I took advantage of my freedoms. And we don't even take advantage of our freedoms in Christ. We don't understand that God said you have rule here. That's why he says what you bind and lose. I'm giving you authority because you're in my image and in my likeness. Thank you, son. Watch this, Genesis. Genesis 26, 1 and 2. Watch. It says, then God said, let us make human beings in our image. That's God the Father and the Holy Spirit all talking to each other. To be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small things, uh, the small animals that scurry, that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. We, we worship the things that we're supposed to be. He says, you have dominion. He says, they will rule over the livestock and the birds and the sky and the wild animals. Y'all will have, uh, and I, we sometimes we worship it. We'll make an image and wear it around our neck. We'll take a lion and say, I'm king, and worship the lion image. We take the things that God said you have dominion over, and we worship it when we are over that because we don't know who we are. Point two in the last one. We need to remember how he changed the game. First, we need to understand who we are, and now we need to remember how. And I want to skip a chunk, though, so I'm going to jump down to uh, Luke 24. Verses 1 through 8. Watch this. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. Then the man asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Why are you over here searching in tombs for somebody that's alive? Watch what happens. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee? That the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he will be rise again, and that he will rise again on the third day. Then they remember what he had said. And I was studying this, and God said, Tell the people, some of y'all know exactly what I told y'all. I've been declared victory over you years ago. You just didn't believe it. See, the issue here was not that they didn't remember, they remembered. They didn't believe it when he said it. That's why they was coming down here with spices and oils about to rub him down because they thought he was there when he clearly told them, I got the son of man got to be in the heart. I got to go die for three days. I'll raise. They didn't believe him. The issue was not they didn't remember. They didn't believe. And some of y'all need to go back and remember God been prophesied stuff over your life when you was five. And you said, that's, that's still what I want you to do. That's still what I want for you. Go back. Go back. Give me, give me, uh, uh, jump back up. Give me Luke 23. We're going to end here. I got to end here. Verse 32. Two brothers, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. When they came to the place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. And the, criminal, the criminals were also crucified. One on his right, one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for the clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leaders scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he's really God's Messiah, the chosen one. He says the soldiers mocked him. Now, now, the crowd watched, and the religious rulers and the Pharisees and Sadducees, they mocked him and scoffed at him. Let him save himself, Messiah. And it hurt me. I, I was studying this, and I, I dropped a tear. I was hurt because we still are doing that to God. We let our religion block people from the kingdom of God. And we're letting our religion block us from the kingdom. This whole thing is about God's rule on, from heaven on earth. And we've allowed it to be blocked. And I was like, wow, they're scoffing. He's on the cross dying, praying for them. Lord, forgive them. And as he's praying for them, interce intercessing for them between them and God, they're scoffing and laughing at him. He said, he's he says, verse 36, the soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with the words, this is the king of the Jews. <laughs> they only knew. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too. While you're at it, so one of them got Jesus in the middle with one on the left, one on the right. And one of them is scoffing at him, mocking him. Come on, save yourself. And while you waiting, get me off here too. Now watch what happens. But the other criminal protested. The other criminal defended him. 
He said, don't you fear God? Whoa. He just called Jesus God. He says, even when you have been sentenced to die, we deserve to die for our cause, but this man ain't done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Watch what happens. And Jesus replied, I assure you. He says, today you will be with me in paradise. And I tell people all the time, your, your, your works have nothing to do with your salvation. This man goes to heaven for just believing that Jesus was who he said that he was. He was a criminal. He was dying, put to death for his crimes. He admitted, I'm a sinner. I'm a criminal. I deserve to get what I'm getting right now. He said, but you didn't. If you, you don't ask a person to remember you when they come into their kingdom, unless they, you believe them to be a... He believed Jesus to be exactly who he said he was. And Jesus looked over here. I bet you I can see Jesus leading over like, today you'll be with me in paradise. We're on the way, brother. See, as the other man scoffed and said, save us, the other man put his faith in Jesus and got saved. See, too, time, too much in culture, people are like, well, Jesus is really real. Why this happening? Why are you letting this happen? We wanted a world without Jesus, and that's what we got. You want him out of schools? It's school shootings. We want them out of culture? This is what we get. Everybody with BBLs and all the stuff that's popular now. We wanted him out. We wanted separation from church and state. We wanted him off of everything. So you get messed. You wanted God out, so you got the devil. That ain't his fault. He, is, he, he didn't do that. We did that. We have dominion. We did that. He didn't do that. And we still stop him, prove yourself to me. I'll believe you do something special. I'll believe you if you work a miracle in my life and get me out of this. Because to be honest, most of us didn't promise some stuff and still ain't did it. If you just get me out of this, if you just please don't make her pregnant this one time, I promise I'll, I'll lock it up until I'm married. We done made our cut. If you just get me out of this court situation, I promise God. Just lying to his face. Finessing him. Just finessing him, hustling him. We get mad when somebody try to finesse us out of some or hustle us, but that's exactly how we've done God. I promise I'll do this. I'll obey you just, and the minute things are going good, we just try to act like we didn't really make that promise and forget all about it. He says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Watch this, he says in my last verse. John chapter 14, verse 12 and 13, he says, I'll tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I've done and even greater works. Watch this, because I'm going to be with the Father. He said, watch this, anyone who believes in me will do the same stuff I'm doing and more. He said, because I'm going back to heaven to be with dad, our daddy now, and I'm going to leave you the Trinity, the, the third part of God, the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, and you will be able to operate and do what I did and so. He says, watch this, you can ask for anything in my name. When it get red, it get, that's red writing. So when Jesus is talking, you better really believe it is what it is. He says, you can ask for anything in my name. The key is Jesus. Uh, no cap on the God is dope shirts. Great. But people can, people can tolerate the, the word God. Which one are you talking about? But when you say Jesus is dope, that changes the whole thing. You get a lot less confidence when you put Jesus' name, Jesus in there. The, 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 the key is Jesus. He's the bridge between God and man. He's the redemption. He's how we get back and right with him. He's the one with the white shirt on saying, give it to me. I can carry it for you. He says, he says, you can ask my, for anything in my name and I would do it so that the son can be glory to the father. He said, I'll perform and follow your behalf. Watch this, watch this. Anything you ask, I'll do. Anything you have authority over, I'll back it. Anything you, and some of y'all, I, I better start standing in the gaps for your marriages. The enemy loves to kill marriages. Because if I can get that man out of line, I can get the wife. That's easy. That's easy. The kids and the wife is easy work. If I can get that man out of line, and if I can destroy that marriage, see, this is the thing. Strong marriages create strong families. Strong families create strong churches. Strong churches create strong communities. Strong communities create strong cities. Strong cities create strong states. Strong states create a strong country. Strong countries create a world, a whole world. It all starts with two men, a man and a woman, say, we're going to honor God. And if he can ruin that nucleus, the rest of it is going to go down the drain. 
That's why the Marxism now and everything, we want to we want to do away with the normal family. That's why. Kill the family, kill the marriage. I mean, kill the family, kill the marriage, and you can destroy everything. That's why the marriage is always under attack. We want to redefine it or change it or make it something else. Because if you can kill that, the rest is, is the domino effect. He says, ask me for anything. Yes. Ask me for anything. You know when you double down on somebody? Like, didn't I say? Like, you tell somebody, you can have it. Are you sure? Didn't I? Take it. If you ask me for anything in my name, I'll do it. I got one more video for y'all. I need y'all to see this. Is, this is my favorite video, but I'm contemplating not playing it. But I need y'all to, I need y'all to grab this real quick, and we're going to pray. Play that for me. What happened is the enemy threw all he could at him. His biggest blast. He said, it's over. And he threw his biggest blast at Goku, the biggest, most strongest blast he can come up with. And something happened. Goku had reached a level. Jiren said, I'm destroying everybody. See, if Goku lost this fight, all his family was gone forever. His universe was going to be deleted. And he put his head down and he realized it was all up to him. So he had reached a level they call Ultra Instinct. And what Ultra Instinct is, it's a defense where you can't be hit. So when Jaren threw his most fierce, fierce attack at him, Goku just grabbed it and made it disappear. And without even really doing much, he was so fast, he hit him with combinations that knocked Jaren out. And something happened, people start to stand. Because they realized he had reached a certain level. The, the autonomous ultra instinct. I don't care. I don't care what you've been through. Jesus don't care what you've been through. Or what the enemy has threw at you. Or what you've been through. Or what happened in your childhood. Or what happened. Jesus has ascended to a level where nothing can touch his love for you. Nothing can touch his love for you. No matter what the enemy throw at you, no matter what defense he throws at you, no matter what combo he throws at you, God said, I'm, for, I'm fighting for you. And I can guarantee victory. I can guarantee victory.